avenue that will go a long way in reviving the dwindling standards of the sport that is basketball in the country and that's why Cynthia Mumbo decided to conduct uh, the Cup of Basketball Camp that has been happening at Hillcrest International School for the last one week. Of course, bring on board kids who've got potential and are talented in the basketball from uh, several schools in Nairobi. And she's saying she's going to be extending the same and spreading her wings a little bit further to other regions in Kenya. But right about now, we're speaking about Matas football and it's about Gormaya Continental Bid. We're hosting Lodvik Aduda, CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Gormaya Football Club. Of course, joining us on set right about now. And of course, Haron Shakava, who promised to be with us uh, still offline, but probably we're optimistic that maybe he's on his way here. But before that, of course, we're going to take it away with Mr. Duda. Uh, good to have you on board. See you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. How are you doing? You're fine. Congratulations, by the way. How does it feel, you know, making it to the group stage, being the first team, the first Kenyan team to advance to the group stage of Continental Championship? Well, without being arrogant, <laughs> I think uh, it has been a journey. Uh, a systematic journey to take Gormaya back to where it really belongs. You remember the last time that uh, Gor uh, played at this particular stage was about three decades ago, uh, which uh, ultimately cul culminated in uh, the famous win against Esperance way back on the 5th of December 1987. After that, the club has taken a news dive, but we did undertake to try our level best to t t take it back to where it is supposed to be. This journey, I believe, began about 80 years ago, uh, beginning with the helm of the realm of uh, the current chairman, Mr. Ambrose Rachier, and we've been systematic on how we wanted the club to progress. You remember uh, a couple of years ago, Gore suffered one of the heaviest defeats, two actually, one under APR, with a young team that had been put in place by the late James Younger, uh, and APR did uh, talk Gore, I think, 5-2 or 5-1. 5-1. Yeah. And then uh, uh, came the other drubbing uh, in the hands of uh, uh, experience which uh, the match in Nairobi got lost 3-2 and the subsequent return match in, 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 in Tunis uh, the team was beaten 5-0 so experience then qualified on an aggregate of 8-2 that made some of us who got involved with Gormaya to get back to the drawing board because we did realize that at that stage it is not kid stuff you have to get not just talent, but formidable talent, coupled with a lot of experience. So we've been injecting a lot of both into the team, though with a lot of hardships, given the fact that for you to get to that kind of a, a, a stage, you really need to invest in player recruitment and play, player development. So given the fact that uh, the country or the league also allowed uh, uh, the clubs to utilize the services of uh, uh, foreign players we decided not to just get any foreign player to come and beef uh, the team but we went also for quality look at the foreign players that have been part and parcel of the progression of gormaya if you look at uh, jack twisenge Tuisenge plays for the national team, Amavubi, of Rwanda. He has been a captain of that team. Look at uh, Godfrey Walusimbi, a mainstay in the defense for the Cranes. Look at Karim Zigimana, the captain of Burundi national team. Look at Khali Dawucho, who left, a mainstay in the middle field of the Cranes. Look at Baba Kizitu a mainstay in the middle field of Uganda Cranes. Look at uh, Abu Basibomana, was until a year ago the number one left fullback, uh, Amavubi. So coupled with that, we also brought into the team some of the best top players 
locally found. Your knowledge on the series of events at Gormaya Football Club is amazing. But also, Robert, I know you'll read from the same script with the CEO that, you know, uh, it's all about uh, massive recruitment in terms of potential talent, you know, uh, blended with vast experience. And probably, is that the way other Kenyan teams will follow suit if they have to reach to the stage Gormaya has done? It's one of the key factors that uh, every team has to follow in that you need to have good recruitment, good structures. But what I want to engage the CEO on is all about the resources at Gormaya and also at Kenyan Club at the moment. Mr. CEO, we saw that when you are going to South Africa, you suffered really that the team did not have air ticket. We understand the league does not have a title sponsor. but. How are you fighting away all of that, in that you can become a self-sustaining club? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of the tickets uh, on the eve of our travel to South Africa was a bit unfortunate. Yes. It was in unfortunate in the sense that you remember quite well at the beginning of the year, during uh, the Sawyer Award uh, celebrations held at the KICC, none other than the deputy president of this country gave an assurance that any team that will qualify to carry the flag of the country the government will take responsibility yes i do appreciate the fact that in our previous uh, outings the ministry of sports and heritage did provide air tickets for a 30 parks Yes. to Equatorial Guinea when we were going out to play the return leg match against uh, Leones Vegetarianos. Uh, the same feat was also uh, replicated when we were going out to Tunis to play our second leg return match against Esperance. We, as we usually do, did put a request through the Federation who subsequently placed the request to the Ministry of Sports and Heritage for the provision of the tickets. And I am aware, because I was present yeah. when uh, the officer in charge at the Ministry of Sports and Heritage did authorize the issue of the tickets which would have enabled the team to travel to South Africa. I do not know and I don't understand what happened thereafter because at around quarter to six in the evening on on friday i got a call and an sms from one of the officers from the ministry of sports and heritage telling me about the sad news that that authority to issue gormaya with the tickets to enable them to fly to south africa had been turned down what did anybody else expect us to do at that 11th how? I mean, some people might insinuate that we might not have done what we ought to have done, yeah. knowing very well that uh, we were supposed to travel. But having been given an assurance right from the Ministry of uh, Sports and Heritage, and even from the, hi the second highest authority in the land, yes. really, it was not God going out for a friendly match. It was not God going out there for a Premier League match. God was going out there to represent the country. Uh, away from that, Mr. Adoda, we understand it's really unfortunate that you had to pass all through that. But as a sports administrator in this country, it's not only Gormaya, it's not only F. Leopards, but almost every club in the Kenyan Premier League and most of our clubs are not self-sustaining. What, what can be the what is the cause of that? Because you see, Gormaya, fifty years later, you are not self-sustaining. FC Leopards the same. What is the major cause of that? Well, one, let us look at what happens elsewhere. All those clubs that we are talking about, save for probably Barcelona, you can count them. Which really depends on their membership. Yes. All those other clubs have corporate sponsorship, title sponsorship. Yes. I would take this opportunity to challenge the corporates in Kenya. Why do they want to shy away from sponsoring the most you know, um, uh, followed uh, sport in the country? 
football. Yes. I know some of them have always thrown around the reason that there is a bit of mismanagement and you know uh, uh, non-professionalism in the running of uh, 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 football, which to some extent is true. Yes. But that having been said, it is also their honors to come on board to really use uh, uh, football as a medium also of you know, uh, advertising their products and, and, and services. You cannot run any meaningful football because football is a capital intensive sport. You must have the money every day. Look at what is happening now. The federation does not have sponsorship. Yes. The league does not have sponsorship. What do you expect the clubs to do? And look at the clubs that we have in Kenya. Take a look at the role of clubs in the current Premier League. There are three quarters, you know, uh, parastatal teams. It is not their business yes. to run football, you know, because what they do now is uh, CSR. Uh, CSR. Yeah. But if they inject that kind of money into the league, you know, then the community-based clubs, because football is about passion. Foot look at a match between, say, Tasca and, and, and Sofa Parker in a 30,000 30, capacity stadium when it is still operational at Nyayo Stadium. Yes. You will hardly find 100 fans. fans. I mean, these are top teams. Tasca yeah. is a top, top team in the country. In the country yes. And with the kind of money that it goes with. But what happens? You know, look at Bandari, uh, KPA. You will only find that Baraki stadium full or near full when Bandari plays against Gore or FC. But when they play against these other teams, you will hardly find the kind of people, you know, without being uh, uh, derogative, um, employees of KPA. KPA. <laughs> you get? Yes. So, why don't you use that money to get a, a team that has roots in Mombasa or in Coast? That has some sort of some, national yes. outlook. Yes. And, and a self, you know, uh, uh, a relationship between the people and the team. You get? I saw something in, in, in uh, Pretoria on Wednesday when we were playing uh, uh, Super Sports. Super Sports, I think, is one of the richest, if not the richest club in, in, in the continent. Yes. Gentlemen, believe it, there were hardly 200 fans in that Lucas... For Super Sports for United, Super yes. Sport United. For that Lucas Moripe stadium. stadium. Because one, they don't belong. Two, the team currently has you know dwindling performances so all in all and the long shot of all this is yes. that fans will also associate with success and that is one area that as gormaya we undertook to struggle to put up a formidable unit that can post positive results Talking about fans associating themselves with the team, Gourmet and FC Leopards are community clubs that possess huge and massive fanatical following in several parts of the country. Why can't you be opportunistic and capitalize on the same and generate some sort of you know, revenue that will empower you to be uh, some sort of self-reliant club? First and foremost, we must take cognizance of the fact that there is a difference between fans and members, right? Yes. If you take cue of uh, what Baka does, Baka has members who subscribe to an annual membership fee. Yes. yes. I would wish to state it here and now that we have begun that kind of a model. And as I speak now, we have already rolled out a membership drive where we have categorized uh, the membership of the club with the ordinary members paying 1,200 shillings per year. Uh -huh. Basically, we are looking at if you are unable to pay the entire amount, then we give you a latitude 
of paying 100 shillings per month. Yes. We are already on it. And if I open my phone, you can see that we already have a register where each and every day I have a real-time information about how many members are registering every day. We have the life member category where uh, we expect anybody who wants to be a life member to pay 100,000 Kenya shillings. And That's once. Once. Yeah. We have uh, the golden category where we expect those that would wish to be in that category to pay 50,000 Kenya shillings. We have the silver at 20 and we have the bronze at 10,000 pounds. So in your own assessment, what you're saying that, you know, uh, the strandedness of Gourmet Football Club a day uh, prior at the fixture against Supersport United away in South Africa, to some extent it's attributed to, you know, lack of government commitment because maybe you will argue that it's the responsibility of the government through Ministry of Sports to facilitate expenses involving national teams and national probably teams. clubs taking part in sort of continental and international duties. Is that what you're trying to say in a nutshell? I am not trying to say that is the norm and that is an assurance that was given to the entire country by none other than the deputy president of this country. Yes. In view of the fact that the sponsorships, particularly from a sport pesa that have massively invested over the years, you know, in the development of football, both at club and at the league level, were withdrawn because of the reasons that we know. So, had we been told earlier that this time round you will not receive the tickets as you have received in the previous two uh, occasions, we would have done our, 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 our stuff. Because assuming that indeed we missed to go to uh, South Africa, it was not going to be the ministry who was going to take the wrath. Yes. It is the club that was going to be punished by CAF. Yes. So we knew exactly that if nobody was going to give us uh, the tickets as had been prom promised, we were going to go out on our way to solicit for or even you know, go out and, and, and take a debt. We, I believe, in this country, there are travel agents who could, we would have approached and uh, given us tickets on credit. Keep talking to us, double two one six two is our SMS line starting with the word touch. What do you think about Gurmaya Football Club Continental bid and their qualification to the group stage of CAF Confederations Cup? Of course, being the first Kenyan team to advance to the stage of that particular continental championship. What do you think about their potential and capability of sparkling? Do you think they have what it takes to deliver? And remember, they will pocket a whooping 27 million shillings. I don't know whether that one is true or it's a rumor CEO <laughs> going to be clarifying to us and substantiate, though we don't need to get a share of the loot. <laughs> but congratulations to them, of course, advancing to the next stage. And we're talking about Gunmaya Football Club with Lodvik Aduda, CEO of the club. Of course, Aaron Shakava not being in position to be with us still offline and we're not sure whether he's still on his way uh, here, but we're still talking to the CEO. Maybe as far as the cash and the hefty amount of money you're going to be uh, taking home after advancing to the group stage of continental championship, what are the key priorities now? Well, I really don't <laughs> subscribe to this hefty yeah, bounty that people are talking about. <laughs> that money is actually not there. One, it is not going to come now. It will be paid at the end of the competitions, somewhere in November. And two, Considering the expenses involved in participating in these matches, that's peanuts. Yes. Why am I saying it's peanuts? Look at what the club is required to do. From paying the air tickets for the match officials, their return air tickets from wherever they come from, to paying for their accommodation, their local transport, and on top of that, you pay the match commissioner's allowance at a rate of $1,200 each time that they've set foot in this country. 
It is also the owners of the home team to pay for the local transport of the visiting team for the number of days that they will be in the country. Yes. You also realize that you must also take care of your players. Their preparations, their accommodation, their transport, their bonuses, and all this kind of stuff. Now, when you go away, it is also your responsibility to pay for, like, visas, to pay for your accommodation, the number of days you go out there, and all the incidentals that go with that kind of preparations and uh, uh, eventual participation in those matches. So, in short, quick math, you realize that you spend not less than 10 million shillings to prepare for just one round of a match. Mr. Duda, away from the money, because everybody talks about money and all that, but they don't really understand what it goes in running a football club and making it successful. We wanted to concentrate on the playing unit so far of to today because we understand Dylan carries the new coach in town. 12, 11 matches so far, you are still second position with eight matches, three matches you have not played so far. What do you make of your playing unit of today? I think as of today, God has the best players in the country. Yes. We have a total of about 27 players. Of course, two of them are on injury list. Yes. And nobody's assured of any position at any given time. Mm. And that is why you've, if you have been taking cue of the lineups, Yes. The coach has been rotating that team and giving each and every one of those 27 players a chance to play. Yes. One of uh, the officials of, uh, of uh, Wazito yeah. called me a day after we had played against them. Mm -hmm. And he was not amused. The, the after, uh, Thursday, after playing was it on Wednesday? Yes. Yeah. Say, it's your uh, Madarao Nyanini. So I asked him, <laughs> I mean, what do you mean, Madarao? Hey. How can you people decide to, to play Mieno to play me, Mieno as the central defender? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. sana. They said, no, yeah. we've got nothing. I yeah. mean, as a, a manager yeah. of the team, I do my bit yes. in the organizations of you know uh, the club, uh, the club. Mm -hmm. but there's somebody who is fully a hundred and one percent in charge of the playing unit, and that is the head coach. Yes. So whatever the head coach decides to do with his team, I have nothing. Sorry, to do with I have it. nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Now we, as I did mention earlier, yeah. we did realize that it's not just a question of, you know, filling up the thirty positions. Yes. We went out through a policy, you know, uh, a recruitment policy, working in tandem with the head coach and the other members of the technical bench to give us their opinion about the kind of players that they would wish to be recruited into the team. Yes. I have a small clique of very concerned individuals yes. with a technical know-how who go out there to look for those players. Yes. We have a dual approach. The first approach is to ask the head coach and his technical bench to be able to give us their preferred choices, choices whom they have tracked in yeah. the league. Then I, together with the rest, now take the other end yeah. of ensuring that we do negotiations mm -hmm. with clubs uh, yeah. where the players are uh, um, uh, have their contracts and our second approach is for us the small clique that i've talked about once we have been told that we want this or these positions need to be beefed up yeah. then we've got a network now, this network goes out to look for these players. Yeah. And then again, uh, in 
four or five years, in five years, four years you have won the league and you have traversed the continent in the, in the, in the preliminary round and coming back. Now you have gone to the next milestone. That is the group stage of the Confederations Cup. Do you believe or agree that that is now the level of where Gormier should be playing away from the Kenyan Premier League? Because now you've knocked at the door, it is finally open. Now that's where you are. We've got now three matches which will be played here at home in the group stages. And I know you'll be fighting very hard to get to the quarterfinals. That is now your level. Well, it is true. And I did mention earlier on that it has been our ambition to take Gormaya back to where it belongs. Yeah. It's not an easy task, but we are already there. Yes. Now begins the hard work. These are top 16 teams in the continent under the category of the Confederations Cup. We would wish to you know, give it our best yes in order that it can give our players the necessary experience to tackle the cl championships next year yes i am certain once again without being arrogant <laughs> yes. that the 2018 league yes. is for gormaya to lose yes <laughs> record 17 team champions, champions. Yeah. that is our aim but we are using the platform to really give the players and the club the necessary status that it requires to get back to the continental platform. Look at what is going to happen in the next probably uh, one hour or so. Yeah, The draw. Yes. Now one of the, the, the advantages of being up there is that you get seeded. Yes. Now, once you are in a position to, to get seeded, you do not have to go through some of those crazy rigorous, you know, moments of going through the preliminaries on this kind yes. of things, yeah. you know. So that is what we want. And we believe that at that level, particularly for the Kenyan players, we will be giving them a chance to enhance their natural talents, inherent natural talents, yes. and we are also going to give them a, uh, 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 the possibility of enhancing their value in yeah. case of any ambitions to turn professional. Because at this stage, so to speak, you know, many of those agents are going to go out to start okay. following. Yes. I have already got several calls since Wednesday night about three of our players who agents are already eyeing for some of the top clubs in south africa yes i will not mention names <laughs> yes but i mean that is what goes with you know participating at that level yeah now if that happens yes then it means we are also contributing to enhancing the players welfare because yes. if if they get their stints to be you know uh, recruited into more advanced professional leagues then definitely haliao pia in endelea as we wind up of course as you talk about uh, gormaya standing a huge chance of you know being crowned champions for 17th record time this season don't you think the dominance by gormaya football club in top flight that is kpl will even water down the standard of the top flight and maybe a rallying call to your opponents as far as those other teams that are taking part in top flight so that we can have some sort of quality competition no <laughs> that one you'll have to say no i don't think <laughs> that is the case yeah. instead yes i would wish to give it as a challenge to the other clubs yes. to emulate what we are doing i mean some of those clubs without demeaning them also want to get say like uh, 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 foreigners into their teams yes but what kind of foreigners do they bring into their teams? some what kind of foreigners do uh, does <laughs> FCR? For quality i mean you don't go and get somebody who last played competitive football three years ago to come in for a professional stint you'd rather get the players now two we have a vibrant youth structure 
I believe Gormaya is the only KPL club with a formidable youth team, which currently participates in the uh, FKF Division Two League. The losers of uh, the finalists at Chapadimba. Yes. And the captain of the under-20 national team that is going to play against Rwanda in a short while comes from Gormaya. Yeah. We have had a series, a number of these youth players, you know, already turning out for their respective national teams. Yes. And some of whom have gone out there, passing through the youth team, passing through the senior team. We have Marcelo, we have Amos Nondi, now we have Alpha Onyango, and many others who have... Cliff Nyakea, who is currently... The Scoring goals for Madari. For Madari. <laughs> yes. yes. Derek Onyango. I mean, I can mention all of them. That means that there is something that we are doing that needs to be emulated by the other teams in order that they can also raise their standards. We're now winding up, and my last question to you, I will be straight. A man who forms an integral part as far as the team is concerned is downing tools seeking for payment, and as we talk about continental football, the two legs, he didn't take part. That is Godfrey Walusimbi, one of the phenomenal left backs you have he said in one of the local you know dailies no pay no play what's the way forward well uh it is unfortunate for him to make such kind of statements uh given the fact that even without getting into the field as we speak he is being paid i mean the unfortunate situation that has arisen and brought up all this hula baloo is about uh the balance of his uh, sign-on fee we did undertake to pay him but in the circumstances that i've explained here with respect to uh, financial obligations what did people expect us to do we have about two million shillings and we are expected to go and spend about 1.7 million shillings to take care of our our accommodation in Tunis and the other related expenses. Yes. And here is a boy who also wants us to part with a million shillings. Really, we looked at the probability of, you know, uh, what... What you can offer, offer him and what the team can use. I am aware that the chairman of the club did call Walusimbi, amongst other players whom we also owe, in order to tell them about what currently is transpiring. The rest came when the Simbis decided to stay away. Sincerely, even where you guys work, your employer calls you and you say, no, it's him to come for me. Uh, to me, that is insubordination, one. Two, he is still contracted player. It is unfortunate the circumstances, the circumstances under which he got himself entangled with that kind of issue. The pressure is coming from his agents, whom we were not party to when he signed with those agents. But we are addressing it. We need his services. Yes. But he must also be considerate. I can authoritatively, as the CEO of the club, mention here that we are going to finalize the issue of Walusimbi in the shortest time possible. Because his continued absence yeah. is equally affecting the performance of some of the players, particularly on that particular wing mm -hmm. where he plays. Okay. Top-notch discussions. You don't want to miss every Saturday, one to three, of course, talking to us as far as continental uh, beat of Gourmet Football Club. 16-time KPL champions who've advanced to the group stage of CAF Confederations Cup being the first Kenyan team to do that you know or uh, getting to that stage and group is being done this particular afternoon and we're going to be knowing who will Gormaya be looking horns against as far as the championship is concerned always a pleasure having you on board CEO thanks Thank for coming you through and much, clarifying yeah. several issues affecting the team we wish you all the very best and Gormaya football club will be playing against Tika United tomorrow and that game will be aired live on this particular channel you hopeful of three points maximum ones the journey continues <laughs> The team will give its best. The journey continues. The team will give its best. We're taking a short break and coming up next is a profile on World Cup ahead of Russian edition. And this time round, we're focusing on five-time World Cup champions, Brazil, a.k.a. 
the Samba Boys. Don't go away. Stay tuned. The fans are coming. The fan favorite segment where we discuss matters international football with focus on the semi-Sofiofa Champions League coming next on Tuesday and Wednesday. Don't go away. <laughs>